Good morning, everyone. Today's verse of the day is Isaiah 2.22. Stop trusting in mere humans who have but a breath in their nostrils. Why hold them in esteem? Why hold them in esteem? Now, of course, we know we should trust God before we trust any man. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all sinned. We can all let each other down. At times, we don't even know when we're letting each other down. We just do it so naturally. We let ourselves down. Human beings are fallen. They make mistakes day in, day out. And yes, we should trust the Lord. But what should we do with the humans? We don't, we don't trust, trust each other, but what, what should we do? I like what the Lord talks about how we should treat our brothers in the Lord. He says, my children, I will be with you only a little longer. Mind you, this is when Yeshua was just about to leave us. You will look for me and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now where I'm going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So we don't put our trust in man, but we are to love one another. While loving one another, the world is to know that we are truly the Lord's disciples. So we put our trust in God and we still love one another. Understanding our little mishaps that, that can occur are... We betray each other sometimes. It, it, it really, really sucks. But when doing that, when, when dealing with, with fellow believers, though, we don't, as we put our trust in the Lord with them, we also test them when we get to know them. One of the things that, that I always do before I ever say, okay, I want to continue listening to a sermon from a certain preacher or anything, I take and measure them up with the Word of God. I want to know how did they measure up with the Word of God? Did they, did they look like the Word of God? Do the actions that they say are the words that they say, do they match what's in this Bible? If they don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't trust them. It says, dear friends, do not believe every spirit. But test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. We have to use this to measure up. First thing I do, since this is modern times, I always just YouTube and put, if a, somebody's like, hey, Warren, you got to listen to this new pastor. I put them in the YouTube search bar and I put exposed. That is the quickest way for me to do it at a at a first glance. And I, I find a lot of surprising stuff when I do that. And I get to hear their own words and see their own videos. And a lot of times, because these are latter times, they don't match the word of God. All right. But if you're dealing with a believer personally, well, a one on one, a relationship with that believer and they, they sin against you. Right. Though you trust God, and, but you still love them. If they sin against you, if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they have listened to you, you have won them over. So first thing you do, you, you, put them, you bring them aside. Hey, you did such and such and such. That's not pleasing to God. That's not pleasing to me. What's going on, man? Right? But... If they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they didn't listen to you the first time, get some fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord and then go talk to them. And that way people know that you're not just jumping off of things and just saying random things. No, you, you bring along some others, right? And maybe they'll hear them if they can't hear you. If they still refuse to li listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen to, even at the church, 
Tell them, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. So then you, you broadcast. Maybe the, the, that shock, that broadcast will shake them to the core, will help have them repent. And if they don't, then you got to treat them as an unbeliever. You have to. Now you're like, wow, what does that mean? What was, how would you treat an unbeliever? How, how should we as Christians treat unbelievers? Jesus said, love the Lord your God. This is the, grace, the two greatest commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbors as yourself. You love them as yourself. You love your neighbors as yourself. Just because you treat them as a, 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 a pagan or a tax collector does not mean you don't love them. You don't treat them with respect. You love them. You want them to repent. The things that you do for a person that is, un, that is an unbeliever is so that they repent and so that they can come to know Jesus. All right. You just cannot share deeper inner thoughts. They can't be as close to you as they once were. You cannot share that. You can't. You definitely your trust level with them is even lower. We don't trust man normally, period. But now it, <laughs> of someone who is your brother, you have more trust in than someone who is not your brother. We always ultimately trust God. But. Yeah, you have to separate yourself even further from them. And as, as Jesus points out, he says, decrease so that I may increase. The whole point, the whole objective of treating them as an unbeliever is so that they will repent and come to know the Lord, that they come back to the Lord, that they already know and come back to the Lord. That's why we do anything. That's why we pull back out of people's lives sometimes. So we decrease so that the Lord may increase. Maybe we're, we're blocking his way, right? So that is what I want to tell you. Is that one? No. <laughs> Don't trust man. Two, any teacher, measure them up. Look at them. See how they line with the word of God. Look at my, my series. Let me see. Look at my series. Number nine, verse a day, number nine, to see what I'm talking about as far as how teachers can be in the church in the latter times. It's very dangerous, so you must measure them up against the word. And number three, always, always, always come to them at the proper procedures, if they're your brother and sister, to win them back. And number four, if you don't win them back, treat them with love. Decrease so that he may, may increase, but treat them with love. Tomorrow, I'm going to go through this verse again. I'm going to go through Isaiah 2.22 again. And this time we're going to take it in its exact context of the chapter that it's speaking of. Today we dealt with the heart, with the, the whole context of the Bible, but we're going to look at it in a smaller gap tomorrow. Dear Heavenly Father, just thank you for your word, Father. Thank you for, for loving us, and thank you for instructing us on how to treat our brothers. We trust only in you, Father. And when we see people who are more and more like you, Lord, we know we can somewhat trust them more, but we always look to you. We don't let our hearts get too set on man. Thank you, Father, and Lord, I, I just come to you for those that need healing, Father. Pray specifically for my uncle and his leg, but Father, I, I just, uh, for his knees, but I, I just pray for anyone that, that can need healing, Father. Please, please help them. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen. Goodbye.